another for Allison Bishop. Thank you. Uh, it's good to be here. Um, I am not an anthropologist, which seems to be the, the trend of the night. Um, I was trained as a cryptographer and a data scientist. Um, so if you don't know what those words mean, let me break it down for you. A cryptographer is somebody who works really hard to use fancy algorithms to protect your super secret private information from governments, that same stuff that you give away freely to corporations. <laughs> and a data scientist is just a regular scientist who at some point needed money. <laughs> um, so uh, I have been working in high frequency trading and stock trading now for the last uh, few years. I started my own company a few months ago uh, with a co-founder. Um, thank you. It's fun times. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of Google searching about things like how to start a high frequency trading business. Um, and it's fun because targeted advertisers are now highly convinced that I'm a successful man. Um, and I've learned so many good tips. Like I now know how to buy a Christmas present for my wife, my mistress, and my secretary uh, without getting them confused. Um, it turns out it's pretty easy. You just get them the same thing. Um, I think as a society, though, we are going a little too deep into the targeting and data science and making everything personalized and getting everyone's feedback all the time. Uh, when I first started seeing those feedback machines with the little smiley and frowny faces in places asking you about your experience, they were mostly in places that made sense. Um, but now I've seen one in the Port Authority bus terminal bathroom <laughs> in New York City, and it's asking you, how was the hygiene in this bathroom? I don't want to know what goes through the mind of someone who's willing to touch that frowny face. <laughs> like, are you thinking to yourself, okay, I might die of cholera, but at least they have my feedback. <laughs> Um, I th it's all always exciting too when we come up with new technologies that are really innovative in their uselessness. Um, my new favorite, and this one sadly is real, is a standing desk that you can adjust remotely via Bluetooth. <laughs> so if anyone can think for me of an actual legitimate time when you need to adjust the height of your standing desk when you're not standing at your desk, please let me know. It's been, it's been bothering me for like a month. <laughs> Uh, I do think technology is going to be a huge part of what really uh, transforms and changes our future, though. I do agree with the uh, big shots in Silicon Valley who are predicting that artificial intelligence will surpass human intelligence. Um, I just don't think it's because machines are getting smarter. Because <laughs> uh, if you think about it, they have a clear path to victory that's really rather simple. They don't really have to achieve high levels of intelligence. They just have to notice a pretty simple pattern, which is that the human mind is very limited in its ability to conceptualize uh, tragedy and, and scale. And this is why like all of our great tragic stories really center upon the trials and tribulations of like one leading man because that's kind of the scale of human suffering that like human beings can connect with and understand. And so if the writers of movies and the writers of the Bible can figure this out, um, I'm sure the machines can too, and they're gonna know that they don't really have to destroy human life in a nuclear war, they just have to kidnap Ryan Gosling <laughs> and we're gonna give up. <laughs> Um, and so, and that's another thing that I don't like about today's like AI apocalyptic movies. Like as a computer scientist, you sort of gets annoying seeing all seeing all the inaccuracies. But I think the biggest inconsistency is that male writers seem to think that the scariest thing they can imagine is creating a thing that you can't control. But women just call that motherhood. <laughs> And there is something legitimate about that in the sense that parenting is scary. Parenting is getting scary. A lot of my friends these days are, are having kids, and um, some of them are asking me, like, so what are the careers that my child can get trained for that are going to be robot-proof? This is a new phrase, like, worried about, like, what are the jobs that are going to be taken away by robots? And someone asked me an interesting one uh, last week. They said, do you think stand-up comedy is going to be one of the last things that can't be done by robots. And I love that idea, because it would really kind of flip the script on um, sort of that moment when your 22-year-old kid calls you from their expensive college they just graduated from, and says, Mom, I decided to be a comic. And the mom goes, oh, thank god, a robot-proof career. <laughs> 
Um, but I, I think I know what kind of job I want in the new machine-based economy that we're going to live in. I want to write greeting cards for robots to give each other. Um, so I've already got a few of them, like, sorry for your data loss. <laughs> and uh, get patched soon. <laughs> so I think that's going to be fun. I think this period of coexistence with artificial intelligence is going to be super fun. I think they're also probably going to pick up some bad habits from humans while we're still kind of around and influencing things. So I can really imagine that like female servers that get uh, taken out by malware at night are going to be interrogated about what kind of firewall they were wearing. <laughs> Yeah, it's, hap it's happened to the best of us in cybersecurity. Um, yeah, it happens all the time. Um, I, I think some, some things are going to be nice, though, to have robots replaced. So, for instance, I, I run marathons around the New York City Marathon every year. And my, thank you, it's really far. I should get a bigger clap for that. It's really, really far. Um, yeah, so I've done, I've done four marathons now, and my favorite part is the funny signs that people hold up. So my new favorite one is pain is just French for bread. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, and so I always tell my friends this and like how they should get out and hold up funny signs for the runners that we really appreciate it. And they have the gall to complain to me that it's tiring <laughs> to stand out there and hold a sign for so long. So I think we could have robots do that. I think that could be fun. We could have robot marathon spectators to be a little more, a little more patient. Um, I think there would be some of the human drama that they wouldn't appreciate, though. So, for instance, this year, uh, my boyfriend decided to run the marathon with me, um, and he trained with me, but then he had a knee injury during training, so he had a bum knee, and he decides to run it anyway, partly out of, like, that he wants to share this experience with me, and partly because he still believes he could beat me. <laughs> and even though it was the only marathon he's going to do in his entire life, and I do them all the time, I did not let him. I crushed him by 40 minutes. <laughs> Kind of deep love relationship that I just don't think robots are ready to understand. <laughs> um, human relationships are complicated. I do sometimes use my the full force of my entire scientific training to like navigate human relationships. So recently, I was having this problem with my boyfriend, where he's one of those people that if he comes upon a plate of cookies, he will just keep eating them until they're gone. And then he will go, oh, I don't know why I did that. Like, they weren't even good. <laughs> and I am a person who will, like, save, like, the last bite of a piece of chocolate for a very specific time that I'm planning to eat it in the future. And if I come home and my chocolate stash is gone at that critical moment, I get very upset, especially knowing that it died in vain on the mouth of a person who didn't fully appreciate it. <laughs> um, so I started trying to solve this problem of where do I keep my chocolate so they, in the house, like, he won't happen upon it and just destroy it. And it was so hard. I kept putting it in places. He kept coming upon it. It kept blowing up into fights. And I finally realized as a scientist, have to, when you can't solve a problem, right, you go back to the drawing board and you interrogate your assumptions. And you make sure that you haven't put artificial constraints on your solution that you don't need. And I realized I don't need to solve the problem of hiding the chocolate where no one would find it. I just need to solve the problem of hiding the chocolate where he won't find it. Uh, so I keep my chocolate stash now in an empty box of tampons in the, in the counter. And this is, really, this is really great. Pro tip, I also love this joke because any men in the audience might go home tonight, open up a box of tampons, and be really disappointed. And I just love imagining the girlfriend in the door going, what was he expecting with that? All right, that's it for me. Thank you all so much. Give it up for Proof Trainings, Allison Bishop. Um,